So welcome to the Victors Podcast. I'm Dr. Lisa Marino. And I'm Erin Hazelbaker. And we're talking all things faith, family, and functional medicine. Yeah, so today we really wanted to talk about um, when your child is developing symptoms of anxiety. Yeah, so why can't my son or daughter get over this anxiety? We've tried everything and it's still going on. And so, you know, we don't have to tell you, but something like 5 million kiddos in the U.S. Um, are dealing with anxiety, um, even more so with depression. Um, and really, we're seeing about a 25% increase just in the last several years. Uh, so what's the issue? Gosh, yeah, and it's just so heartbreaking, you know, as a mom to think about your child just not being, you know, happy and healthy and feeling well. So our hearts just go out to those parents that are dealing with that right now. But we really just wanted to see, you know, what are some practical steps that we could give you to kind of start to work on as a family? Yeah, and so in a previous episode, we did talk about, you know, the anxiety, depression, you know, maybe if you're dealing with that personally, because so much of that, once a child has that, it really makes you think, well, oh man, you know, what have I done? You're what, exactly. you know, how am I impacting this? Right. And it, it, it becomes so personal because it's like, you know, they're under your care. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's challenging to see them go through those things. And, and I only have really toddlers at this point, but, but to see them come up against these challenges um, certainly, you know, forces us. Um, and so first we have to kind of step back ourselves and, and if you need to forgive yourself, you know, if you're holding on to that or forgive whatever traumatic thing happened, we need to work through that, you know, first to be able to see things clearly with good judgment to then make, you know, look at things from a higher view, a bigger picture of like, what is the truth of the situation and how can I make a, a decision for my child, not out of emotion, not out of fear, not out of anger, um, and that I can make, you know, a conscious decision and um, move forward. Yeah. So, you know, when we start into these actionable steps, you know, you'll kind of hear some of the same themes as what we've talked about in a previous episode. But I think, you know, most important that um, Dr. Marino and I, Lisa and I have, have really kind of been digging into and, and really you know, we have it in caps in our notes here and just kind of something that we've been just talking about so much is absolutely social media and having social media fast and just having that be a part of you know your child's life it's so difficult so i have the benefit you know i've, I've told many people this you know um, my kids are not yet teenagers um, i have the benefit of seeing you know the years of research that have happened you know with um, kiddos that are you know that are older than my kids um, and, and just kind of seeing how that research has played out with how the effects of social media have been um, and so, so I have the ability to say then to my kids, like, no, we're just not doing it at all, you know. Um, but what does that mean for a parent whose kids, you know, we, we think it's a safe thing. We think it's, you know, oh, it's a good way for them to interact. You know, they can, you know, be with their friends that way, you know. Um, what do we do now, you know, when our, our child is suffering from anxiety? And we know that it happens way more often in females when they are, when they are um, um, allowed to use social media too. So, you know, what are some steps that you can take as a family to kind of reel that in? You know, how are you doing with social media? Are you able to kind of pull that plug? You know, can you model that for them also? Um, but then just kind of thinking about if you are, if your family had already decided, hey, we're going to allow our children to do this, you know, what are some ways that we can kind of pull that in a little bit? Yeah, I think you first have to recognize that there's a certain, uh, pleasure response that comes about this exactly. there's a reason they're going to give you resistance because it's something pleasurable it's something they enjoy mm -hmm. right and so mm -hmm. that's why man why are they always on there all the time well it does give them some sort of pleasure we know there's a release of oxytocin um, you know we know that they get this feedback from it so right away recognizing anything that we do decide they're going to come up with some resistance exactly. to it and we right. feel the same way oh I have to get you know do I have to put it away but yes can you come up with you know, actionable steps of, of having that discipline and modeling yourself. Hey, we're all going to put our phones away at the dinner table. We're all going to put them away at eight o'clock at night or uh, however that works, you know, we're setting hours and, and can I do that with them too? Because we really yeah. need to, and it's good for our health as well to say, I've got to put work away. I've got to stop staring and comparing. Um, and, and can I do that, you know, right. myself? So yeah. decide, commit and decide and expect the resistance, you know, certainly, and not just from, you know, because your mom, but because, you know, your, their brain is saying, hey, I really like this. Mm -hmm. I want to do that mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. And so can we then replace that with something that get, will give them, you know, 
longer lasting pleasure, not the instant gratification that they're getting. Mm -hmm. Taking a walk, building something together outside, doing a puzzle together. Where can we improve relationship and bonding um, to release that oxytocin rather than getting an instantaneous you know, um, release of, of oxytocin um, in that pleasure center that is, is causing our brain to compare right? Or like we talked about before, numb the feelings that I'm getting rather than allow us to, to open up and to experience mm -hmm. and to um, be able to sit with, with how we're feeling and, and engage in conversation. Yeah. And I would just encourage us to, you know, kind of be honest with ourselves too, as parents, you know, um, it was really eye opening for me. You know, I feel like I'm pretty good at being present. I feel like I'm pretty good. You know, I have social media limits on my phone so that I, you know, I'm not going to be on it for more than 10 minutes. Um, but here my son, you know, it was, I don't know, a couple months back. He, he said, um, mom, I really hate it when you and dad are on your phone all the time. And I'm like, Oof. wow. Yeah. You know, I mean, that really is a slap, like, because I'm going, oh, well, I'm not that person, you know, but yes, I am. And so now what I'm modeling to them and what they're seeing from me is like, oh, no, this is more important. I need to be doing this. It's more important than you. It's more important than dinner. It's more important than anything else. Um, so we've really kind of worked on that, you know, as a family and just kind of putting that aside. You know, work is not that important that I need to still be doing it, you know, continuously during family time. Um, social media is certainly not that important. That text message that I really want to respond to because my brain is telling me, you need to do this, you need to do this, it can wait. You know, I have girlfriends, um, we always laugh. We say, oh, don't ever text them in an emergency because you will never hear back from them, you know. Um, and they just get back to you on their own time. And it's like, well, why can't I do that? I can do that too. That's okay to do that. So um, I think just kind of being honest with yourself a little bit about what we're modeling. Um, but then also, just like Lisa said, what are some actionable steps for your family? Is it getting back to, you know, reading for pleasure? Most of the time they have to read for school. They have, you know, assignments that need to be done. But sometimes it's really fun to pick up just a nonsense book. You know, for me, I know um, I love picking up in summertime just a, a, a beachy summer read um, that just takes my brain and just kind of allows it to kind of relax a little bit. Um, uh, and, and that can be really helpful for me in kind of replacing that, you know, wanting to scroll and numbing that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it might take some time to um, reignite some of those interests for your kiddos, exactly. you know, because they've been so conditioned, maybe to, even for TV, especially, that's an easy thing to distract us. Right. Um, you know, but then the other side of things is maybe there are some real things that are going on at school, bullying, relationships, um, you know, maybe they've seen a recent death or trauma, things like that. Uh, one of my favorite things to do, not only with, you know, adults, but with kiddos too, is uh, your basic serenity prayer. So, you know, yeah. God help me to um, you know, accept the things I cannot change, change the things I can, and, and the wisdom to know the difference, right? So if you can sit down with them and say, what are the things that I'm most afraid about? You know, what am I worried about in this instance? And it's, mom, I'm afraid that you're going to die. Or mom, I'm afraid, you know, or, or I'm, I don't want to go to school anymore because, you know, kiddos are bullying me. And maybe they can't verbalize all this, and maybe it's something you need to write down and think through. But if they are of that age, and maybe they're not verbalizing that, but you know that it's it's a school-related issue or it's a relationship issue, okay, let's let's acknowledge that. Let's verbalize that. What can I change about this situation, and what do I need? What do we need to talk about? You know, learning to trust in God that I'm I'm going through a hardship, and suffering. You know, I'm willing to suffer this for Christ. You know, but what actionable steps can I take? You know, we've talked to the school system, we've talked to the teachers, we've set boundaries. Um, you know, we've found, you know, other, um, you know, ways to get, you know, participation um, outside of school. So what are the actual steps that I can take, um, you know, in order to alleviate the burden, um, you know, on my child for the situation? If it's the death issue, you know, um, have we had conversations? Can we talk about that? Can we talk about why we're maybe afraid of dying and why we don't need to be afraid of dying? Um, you know, naturally that's going to happen, but, you know, because of God's grace and because of what we know about heaven, um, that this can actually be a good thing. And I love to draw from the saints on that because, mm -hmm. you know, you even talk like St. Francis, he would meditate on his death daily because that's what he knew he was, he was working towards and, and that he could be excited about dying because he was looking towards heaven, you know, always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and not that you're going to do that all the time, but I think just to maybe do meditate on that a little bit. And, and it's, again, something that we can model. And then it's, we're not afraid of having those conversations that, you know, we pray for the dead. 
we pray for grandma and grandpa, you know, once they've passed or, um, you know, we don't have to be afraid of car rides anymore or the things that we're going to do because I'm afraid to get to get in the car, for example, because of, you know, a previous car accident. Um, you know, we're going to do, you know, some actionable steps, you know, to alleviate those fears that um, that may be happening. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think to, um, you know, kind of go back to as a parent, you know, what are some other things that I can do? You know, we talked about this a little bit in the previous episode, you know, you know, really thinking about what are you verbalizing? Am I verbalizing? I'm so anxious about X. I'm I'm so um, I'm so anxious about you know this upcoming event, or I'm so um, worried about you know something. Instead of doing that, you know, is there a better phrase that you could be using? Could you say I'm so excited? I am fearful. Um, you know, and really talk through that a little bit differently. You know, just quit, let that word go from our vocabulary. It has just inundated us. Um, and I, I challenge you to kind of listen to yourself, you know, as you're talking out loud, as you're talking with your kids, as you're talking with your spouse, you know, is that coming up more and more? Um, so I challenge you to really kind of look at yourself um, in that way. Instead, can you say, you know, again, what you're actually feeling? I'm thrilled, um, you know, and then honestly, there are times that are scary, you know, so what can you actually do about it? You know, I, um, if it is truly, no, I really am, uh, I'm worried about, um, you know, my job. Okay, well, what can we actually do about that? Is there anything you can actually do about that? You know, um, could, could I start looking for a new job? Could I, you know, be talking with my boss and being more proactive? You know, what are the things that you can do? Take those actionable steps, don't just sit there in fear and continue to use those words. Well, and what are you doing? You're teaching them discipline because let's exactly. apply it to like a test or a project. Um, and so much of that has gotten, you know, changed over the years. Uh, the repercussions, you know, let's mm -hmm. say of that, or I'm worried about college, you know, what is my future going to hold? Well, what things can we be doing? Um, you know, I'm working really hard on my grades um, or, you know, you know, for example, if it's that test, well, well am I prepared enough? And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, can we institute, you know, that discipline so that I don't have to worry I can fall back on that? And maybe, you know, it's it's more a question of, of value, of, of, of trying to ignite that spark and find that passion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and exposing them to, to multiple things to be able to find that value and dignity. You have a purpose and God has given you. And, and are you doing that yourself? You know, right. do I right. know that God has given me a purpose? I have a lot of value, you know, as a mom, as a mother. Um, you have a lot of value as a child. Are you engaging, you know, with them now um, in, the, in the ways that they can help and be productive and give them, you know, purpose? Um, that it's not just about going to school and playing sports and being in clubs, yeah. you know, all the time too. Well, let's shift to, let's talk about, you know, one of our other favorite things to talk about is really nutrition and you know, wellness and in, in, in that angle. Um, so let's talk a little bit about sugar. Um, gosh, Lisa found an incredible study this morning um, that was just showing us that, um, you know, sugar, it, it, when it was published in, you know, 2017, um, it said that those with the highest level of sugar consumption um, were 23% more likely to be diagnosed with a mental disorder than those with the lower sugar intake. So even if we're just saying, okay, we're going to leave the other things off the table, let's just talk about sugar, you know, um, thinking about actionable steps for your family. Because I can tell you that many of our patients, you know, um, their habits are very much, um, you know, not necessarily to to take a look at the label and see, you know, well, what is the added sugar in this product? Because we still think it's important to do fun things. You know, last night, Lisa and I got to be together and our families got to be together and we got to celebrate after a baseball game by going out for ice cream. And that's okay. But it's not okay if all day long my kids are getting added sugar in everything they're eating. Um, granola bars, the cereal, um, you know, yogurt with extra sugars added into it. You know, and you think about like, what are they eating all day long? SpaghettiOs, that was another one. I was blown away. My daughter is always looking for things that are easy for her to cook that she will enjoy eating. And I thought, okay, well, let's go to the store and just kind of pick out some things. And it's just fascinating when you flip things over and just kind of look at the back of the label and figure out, okay, 
Well, okay, so if you want SpaghettiOs, that has, I, I can't remember now how many added grams of sugar it had in it. I think between nine and 15 grams. It was something mm -hmm. absurd. Um, you know, so if you want this, then I'm not gonna allow you to have that popsicle that you're really wanting afterwards. And so that's, those are the kind of things that we're having, you know, conversations with our kids about. Um, and then it kind of makes sense to their brain too. Well, yeah, I, I, I would rather have that sweet thing than something thrown in to what I'm eating. Mm -hmm. Even spaghetti sauce is another one that can be really surprising if you just turn the label over and, and kind of take a peek at it. Um, it's frustrating sometimes too as a parent, um, but then even too once you're teaching your kids like, hey look, if we have it here, then we can't get, do it in a, in a fun setting too, you know? Yeah, it was 11 grams of um, yeah. sugar and, and SpaghettiOs just spaghetti yeah, yeah. following up. So here was the other one. Even though even those without diabetes, those that are not diabetic, higher sugar consumption is associated with lower scores on tests of cognitive function. Yeah. So right away, right. you know, yeah. if you're struggling with that, because usually right. there's, you know, anxiety and depression are definitely tied to, you know, learning disabilities, ADHD, um, and so right away can make a huge impact. Now mm -hmm. again, mindset wise, like you have to be ready to do that and make that change. It's not an overnight switch right you know um and it, it doesn't have to be and it shouldn't be as a family right mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. there are some simple ways you've already mentioned you know removing them from the snacks that you have mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. starting with one meal can we just make breakfast as clean as possible right no added sugar can we just make you know lunch is hard to control maybe at school but now i'm going to start packing their lunch and i'm going to you know Get, provide them with healthy things or maybe dinner is easier or mm -hmm. you do one you know at a time is is um, a great way to do it and and you start to s trade some ingredients out that they maybe don't notice it as much but then they mm -hmm. they start to enjoy that um, if you're ready for it it can make a huge difference to just to have that sugar fast maybe even it's just a week and things taste different they start to enjoy vegetables more fruits more because mm -hmm. of, we, we've been so conditioned to have such you know, sweet taste um, within, you know, our, our snacks and, and meals. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty fun when um, the kids will, you know, maybe just have like sausage and eggs for breakfast or, you know, something along those lines. And then um, I'll cut up a watermelon and they'll say, Mom, this is fantastic, you know, because they're not conditioned, you know, like they maybe would if they had, you know, a bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios or something like that, you know, where they've had that sweet. And then they eat the watermelon and they're going, well, it's okay, you know. But if they, if they don't have that and then they can kind of taste that, they're going, wow, these blueberries are great, Mom. Um, and so so it's it's always kind of interesting you can run little little experiments like that too you know for your kids um, but that is just an easy you know quick step um, we don't want to say eliminating sugar altogether is easy we know it we get that with mm -hmm. our families um, but we also know that how big of an impact that can make pretty quickly yep yep the one thing that I um, you mentioned talking about paying attention to how you are responding to things the one that I really like, and I talk this about this um, with my husband a lot as a football coach, is recognizing the physiological signs, the physiological mm. symptoms that are, are your body's revving up. So yeah. whether it's a test or whether it's a game, you know, even hear that a lot, you know, um, sports-induced anxiety. Um, your body is preparing you for this event, you know, and it's that's what it's supposed to do. Right. You know, when you have to go out and compete and you have to go out, um, you know, and, and use your brain or get on a stage, right, your body is preparing itself, you know, to um, perform. And, and that's okay. So we need to recognize it doesn't necessarily mean that my heart is racing, that it's a bad thing. Right. And right. it does right. depend on your mind of how you're viewing that to think, well, I'm getting really anxious. It's like, no, I'm getting ready to go. Exactly. You know, I mean, it always exactly. for me comes back to that athletic mindset of like, mm -hmm. no, I'm getting ready to go. And I, I got tripped up with this in college because I would think that I was getting hungry. And so I was like, I go over to the athletic trainer and said, you got any granola bars? Like, you got, mm -hmm. I need something. And, and I was getting like ready, ready to go, you know, and I thought, oh, I got to eat something like my son, you know, I'm really hungry. Um, but really like my body was just like ready to go Excited and getting and amped ready. up. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, can I recognize that? And can I use that, those feelings to say, no, this is purposeful. This is useful. Exactly. Now, certainly, you know, you can get on spill over the effect of, I get overly anxious or overly, mm -hmm. you know, excited. Um, or, you know, I can't stop shaking things like that. We need, we do need to be able to learn to calm our bodies mm -hmm. down. And mm -hmm. it's the same way. Practice deep breathing. Um, you know, focus on, on, on one specific thing, right? Um, can I slow, um, slow down my body to be able to, 
to calm, you know, in that environment. So yeah. it goes hand in hand, but I think just recognizing the physiological um, response of what's going on and can I teach my kids kids that um, yeah. to pay attention to those things. Yeah. Yet another mom who, um, you know, she and I have had lots of conversations just kind of about this topic and, and she um, was really working hard. She said one of the things that's hard for her as a mom is, first of all, you know, you don't have control over everything. And so that's really hard for her. Um, you know, so she kind of talked about that, but she said specifically for her, um, you know, she's not a medical professional, um, but, but for her, um, when her kids are, you know, when there's potential of illness, when there's the potential of, um, you know, injury, um, when, you know, something happens, um, that is very scary for her. You know, it's, it's just, it's so fear inducing for her. And so she had a great example the other day. She said, um, you know, something happened with one of her kids um, and, um, you know, their neck got, you know, got kind of hurt. It wasn't anything, you know, traumatic that they needed to go to the hospital or anything but it was so she was able to recognize the pattern in herself of almost like a, a cortisol spike you know yeah. where it was so you know fearful her and she said I, I needed to do the things you know deep breathing you know calm myself down because how can I as a parent then even help my child if I'm so uh, you know revved up and unable to to, yeah. to even model that then for my kids you know if okay this is a scary situation however deep breath mm -hmm. you know we're going to work through this together and again you know that's not going to be the same situation if it's life or death um, but in those normal situations and even gosh how many of us had those kind of questions and concerns during COVID, you know, um, or during the last like huge flu season? I know I do as a mom when one of my kids gets, you know, nauseous and starts to have, you know, this stomach bug. That's where my brain goes, oh no, <laughs> here, we're all getting it, you know, here it goes. Okay, there went one. We're all going to get it now, you know. And so I kind of start to get into that pattern. And so I have to kind of talk myself down and just kind of do that deep breathing. Okay, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Whatever comes, comes. So anyway, you know, I think it's important to kind of remember those those times too and just modeling that appropriately mm -hmm. for our kids. Yeah. One of yeah. my favorite things to teach parents is forgiveness. Mm. Teach your kids how to forgive quickly and heal wounds because otherwise we operate from that wound. Ah right in our emotions, right from our memories. Mm. And it's hard not to make good decisions if we haven't, you know, healed that wound. Mm. Even if it was just something on, little on the playground. Did mm -hmm. you, did you forgive him? You know, not that they have to go to that child and forgive them. Oh, that's nice. But like, you know, in the name of Jesus, I forgive Johnny, you know, for what he did that caused me to get angry or caused mm -hmm. me to feel hurt. You know, mm -hmm. can mm -hmm. I learn to repeat that? Um, and and exactly. this is the best part of what we, about what we do is that We've done studies that have shown that, we haven't done the studies, but there are studies showing that those who practice forgiveness are more resilient to mental health effects. And not just more, but it, it completely eliminated any sort of trend towards mental health. Um, so are we forgiving from those wounds? And maybe it takes over and over and over again because it was a big thing. Um, but learning to forgive yourself, to forgive others, you know, quickly, and daily, mm -hmm. yeah. um, we can get over those things because we're not going to stop them from happening. Right. The onslaughts will still come. The resistance will still come. We're all still broken and fallen. And so can I heal somebody else, you know, um, as quickly as possible? So those wounds don't fester for me and my right. child. Right, right, yeah. So, you know, basically what we're hoping that you will come away with today and, and throughout this conversation is, you know, we want you to have, you know, some actionable steps. We want you to, you know, make sure that you have a pediatrician or a care provider, um, family medicine practitioner that you can trust, you know, that can kind of walk you through, you know, what might be the best actionable steps for your, for your child. Um, and again, when we talk about making sure that somebody is stable and in, in, in a good mental health place, should we have somebody who is not stable, we absolutely recommend that you get into your provider as soon as possible. If that needs to be the hospital, if that needs to be you know, straight into your provider, um, you know, absolutely get that done. However, many of us are a little bit closer on the spectrum to kind of it just starting 
maybe it's mm -hmm. snowballing a little bit. Maybe it's starting to get worse. And so that's what we try to make sure is that we're reaching people when they're just kind of starting into that snowball pattern and, and kind of starting into that routine. So um, we just want to make sure that everybody is very clear about that as well. Yeah, they did release a new um, hotline number that's 988. So just like 911 is for medical emergencies, 988 um, is for psychological or um, suicidal emergencies. emergencies. So that's, yeah. you know, phenomenal. By all means, use that, um, you know, when it's yeah, warranted. Yeah, should that be yeah. warranted for you and your family. But again, just kind of making sure that your pediatrician or your family practitioner is somebody that you can have these conversations with um, mm -hmm. and that you're not feeling kind of pushed out the door or pushed on to the next specialist, um, you know, please reach out to us should it be something that you think might be a little deeper issue. Hey, I think it is food related. Hey, I think it is, you know, okay, well, let's have that discussion. You know, we're happy to just do a free consultation with you. I've spoken with many moms um, just trying to figure out, you know, hey, what is best for my kids? And it might not always be us, but what we can do is just kind of work through what the process might be. Yeah, and that link is victorshealth.com forward slash free consult. And then if you have some kids that are older, maybe teenage, Age, we um, do have a free course called Healing the Mind with Dr. Joe Lepetsky, mm -hmm. and that is victorshealth.com forward slash healing the mind. Yeah. So why don't we just finish up today, end in prayer, and just kind of say a little prayer for especially all those um, kiddos and, and parents who might be suffering a little bit right now. Yeah, so I do want to share um, mm -hmm. this. One of my favorite prayers is called Commission of the Care of Body and Soul, and so I'll share this um, yeah, in sure. the show notes. So Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Into thy hands, Mary, I commend my body and soul. I ask thee to provide for us and to protect us. I ask thee to protect us from the evil one. I ask thee enlighten my mind, strengthen my will, and refrain my appetites by grace. Our Lady and St. Michael, call down from heaven the legions of angels under your command to protect me. I ask thee of all the things I ask of my guardian angel. My guardian angel, under thy intellectual and volitional protection, I place my body. I ask thee to illumine my mind and refrain my appetites. I ask thee to strengthen my cognitive power my memory and my imagination. Help me to remember the things I should and not remember the things I should not. Help me to associate the things I should and not to associate the things I should not. Give me good, clear images in my imagination. I ask you to drive away all the demons that might affect me while I sleep or throughout the course of the day. Help me to sleep and if thou should deem it prudent, direct my dreams. Help me to arise refreshed. Amen. Amen. It's one of my favorite prayers uh, to say for the kiddos. So, um, you know, it's a great one to do before bed or as they're going to sleep um, as well. And you can use that. So we'll share that in the show notes. Yeah, great.